energy is important for different reasons, but uh, uh, the main reason is that, is that feed cost uh, is the main cost in animal production, in swine production, in poultry, and any animal production. And within the feed cost, I think people care about uh, amino acids and vitamins and so on. But most of the cost uh, is represented by energy, about three quarters of the cost usually. Uh, and as you mentioned, I mean, the energy is the main driver of performance uh, of the animals. In, according to the regulation of energy intake and so on. And uh, I think uh, we have to be uh, very careful about energy value of uh, pig feet in, in our case. And in addition to that, energy value can be, to some extent, manipulated, manipulated by technology, by enzymes, by different additives, and it's very important. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, where we explore the science behind nutrition. I'm your host, Jorge Estrada, bringing you expert insights each week to deepen your knowledge. Today, on our podcast, we are honored to welcome Dr. Jan Noble. Dr. Noble, good morning, hello. Uh, it, is great, it is great having you with us today. Most of us are very familiar with your work and legacy, but could you start by sharing a bit about your background with our audience? Okay, good afternoon first, because that's the afternoon for me. Uh, yes, I started in research and in nutrition of gastrics about 50 years ago, a long, long time ago. So I did about uh, 40 years at INRA, that's National Institute for Agronomic Research in France. And uh, I retired about 10 years ago. And after my retirement or during my retirement, I kept doing a little bit of nutrition mainly on poultry, much less on pigs. So my main research during my activities and even during my retirement has many based on energy. Energy is the magic word for me. And so the first thing is energy requirements. And I work for energy requirements on pigs, on cows, on poultry, and so on. The regulation of energy intake, thermal regulation, everything related to energy and energy requirement. And we propose some even models for predicting the energy requirements. And the other side of, of my research has consisted uh, in energy evaluation of pig feeds and poultry feeds uh, and development of uh, tables, feeding tables, and also softwares for evaluating the feeds. So my two main activities have, have concerned energy, one about requirements, and the other one about uh, value for meeting the requirements of the animals. So that. Main, all these uh, studies were mainly based on calorimetry studies. And so my main uh, activity has concerned respiration chambers, and that has been my main tool of research uh, during most of my career, either at INRA or uh, since my retirement with, uh, in collaboration with different groups in the world, uh, in Australia, in Thailand, in Brazil, and so on. So that's my background and what I've been doing uh, so far. Really appreciate that, Dr. Noble. And of course, as I mentioned, it's, it's great to have you here today. Um, and we wouldn't miss the opportunity, as you mentioned, to learn to learn more about energy. That's what we want to hear today. So let's start with, with, with a question that might sound simple, but we know it's a very complex issue. But in a general sense, why is uh, energy important from the you know performance standpoint? and also from the economics in swine nutrition. Yeah, I think uh, energy is important for different reasons, but uh, uh, the main reason is that, is that feed cost uh, is the main cost in animal production, in swine production, in poultry, and any animal production. And within the feed cost, I think people care about uh, amino acids and vitamins and so on, but most of the cost uh, is represented by energy, about three quarters of the cost usually, uh, and as you mentioned, I mean, the energy is the main driver of performance uh, of the animals in, according to the regulation of energy intake and so on. And uh, I think uh, we have to be uh, very careful about energy value of uh, pig feet in, in our case. And in addition to that, energy value can be to some extent manipulated, manipulated by technology, by enzymes, by different additives. And it's very important. And I think the, the most important, even if it's maybe not less a problem in North America or in Brazil, 
uh, where most diets are prepared with for pigs, for with corn and soybean. But in other parts of the world, we rely on many, many ingredients that are available, and we need uh, good systems for ranking, for evaluating uh, these ingredients for, for pig feeds. So that are the main reasons uh, why uh, technically and economically uh, energy is very important in, in swine production. Giga Technologies manufactures just all swine precision feeding systems, designed by a family of pork producers for pork producers. The Gestall feeders are a simple, durable, and reliable solution, trusted by industry experts for all production stages. For 30 years now, Giga Technologies has been at the forefront of innovation, continuously enhancing sow nutrition and delivering remarkable outcomes for producers. Contact Giga Technologies specialists to learn more. And following on that, uh, Dr. Noble, given, as you mentioned, I mean, uh, understanding the energy and the ingredient and you know how to how to use them around the world you know there are many 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 different ingredients used out there um, can you maybe share with the audience a little bit you know some of the key achievements of your research in evaluating the energy in, in swine ingredients yeah uh, so as I said before uh, uh, many in Europe I think we uh, and also in other parts of the world, we rely on many, many ingredients. And I would say that uh, change in the feeding uh, of pigs uh, in the, all over the world uh, was very, very, very important in, in the 80s or 90s in Europe with a lot of ingredients that were either produced in Europe as uh, cereals and uh, byproducts or imported from anywhere in the world. So at that time, uh, people were question about what should be the energy value of these new ingredients we have been using. And these uh, new ingredients were quite different from the conventional ingredients. So it was necessary to, to have a good system for evaluating them, uh, either for energy or for protein. So uh, so that's in that context, I started my, my research on uh, feed evaluation and uh, for, for pigs. The first uh, area I work on was to try to uh, produce a net energy system for pigs that was updated according to the new feeds, the new genotypes of animals and so on. And so uh, at the end, we were able to produce a net energy system, uh, which was better than DE or ME for predicting the requirements and the performance of the animals. And that system was published uh, for the first time in the mid-90s. And uh, afterwards, uh, the, the main achievement was uh, to disseminate that, that system. And I would say that today, uh, this system we produced a long time ago already uh, has been used in most uh, feeding tables, in most uh, companies now in the world, and even NRC in 2012 uh, included that uh, net energy concept. So that was the, the first thing was to produce a system uh, which worked for feeds, for complete diets, and for ingredients at the same time. But at the same time as well, we work on ingredients, evaluating the ingredients, doing metabolism studies, I mean, uh, predicting the DE and the ME of a lot of ingredients. Uh, and the objective behind that was to produce feeding tables and tools for uh, evaluating the, the, the new feeds. But at the same time, we also found that uh, energy digestibility mainly was dependent on different factors. I would say that uh, in the 90s, or I think we considered that we should give uh, one energy value to a uh, feed uh, for swine. But at, the, at this period, we also showed that uh, energy value was changing with body weight, with stage of production and also with technology. And so that's where we started to get into more details about uh, what are the different factors. And at the end, uh, we propose to evaluate the energy value according to for two main stages of production. On one side, uh, growing pig, including the piglets, and uh, on the other side, reproductive pigs. And that, make, that made a big difference in terms of uh, utilization of uh, feed ingredients and mainly according to their dietary fiber content. So we put all that in feeding tables and also we produce uh, software. The name is EvaPig. Uh, and that software has also been used a lot uh, uh, 
over the world, I think. And that means that altogether, uh, we have been able to produce a system for evaluating easily and rather practically uh, the energy value of any feed anywhere in the world uh, and for any type of pig, either young or other pig. So that's the main achievement of our research. No, thanks for sharing that, Dr. Noble. And, and, and again, you know, I mean, that's that's something that has had a great impact on, on, on the system, on, on soy nutrition and many other species, as you mentioned. Um, and, you know, a lot of people, they, we do have, we have implemented that system, right, in, in our in our daily nutrition life, right? Anyways, Dr. Noble, uh, thanks again for joining us today. Everyone, thanks for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and leave us some comments. Join us uh, in our next episode. Thank you.